Hello and welcome to Code Pro, your place for coding, apps, and tech. So in today's video, we are going to talk about how to survive the iOS interview or what to expect really uh, if you're a new developer and you're going into your very first mobile interview that's iOS focused. But um, before we begin, if you are a new mobile developer and you are looking for a good beginner's course, make sure you check out my iOS beginner's course available on Skillshare and on Udemy. Sign up with my links and get the course for 50% off. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So a technical interview is usually broken up into multiple steps. Typically, you start to see the phone screening being the first step, a on-site technical interview being the second step, uh, probably another on-site technical interview after that, um, and then usually the final round is just meeting the team and you know making sure that you are a good fit for the place. So let's start by looking at what to expect in the phone interview or like a first round format. So phone screenings tend to be fairly straightforward depending on your experience level. And typically it consists of the interviewer asking you questions about your background, your work experience, what you did, you know, and all those kinds of things. And then they may start to ask you technical questions um, just to see if you know it. So like for iOS, for example, a really common question you may be asked over the phone is like, what is the MVC or a model view controller design pattern, right? If you can't answer that over the phone, odds are you're probably not going to make it much further in the interview process. So uh, that's an example of a question that you can receive others other, other kinds of questions are maybe a little bit more obscure. They just want to see how much of the language do you know. For example, what is ARC, automatic reference counting? Or can you explain the difference between atomic versus non-atomic? So you actually maybe even asked some old Objective-C questions just to see you know, how deep your knowledge is um, in iOS. Because now with Swift being more of the modern go-to language for most newbies, a lot of people don't have the strong roots in Objective-C. So companies are gonna to wanna to see if you can hit the ground running um, and be able to work in Objective-C or if you'd have to start to refactor everything or you wouldn't be as quick on your feet um, in that kind of environment. So generally speaking, a lot of those questions are based in that direction. Now, there can be situations where you will have to code over the phone. And in my opinion, these are sometimes the worst because you've got you know the phone up in your ear or you know on your speaker or whatever, and then you've got some kind of shared text editor open and you're trying to understand the problem that you know the interviewer is giving you and then have to code it you know while on the phone and there's that awkward silence because you're you know thinking and you know there's someone there on the phone and you're like uh, and it's uncomfortable so let's talk about the on-site interview so this can vary depending on what company you are interviewing for now let's just get this out of the way if we're talking Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, you are going to code and you are going to code a lot. And the interview is going to be long and grueling. Uh, the fail rate is usually pretty high. And even for an iOS position, they are going to make sure that you know your computer science fundamentals, your data structures and algorithms. And if you don't, you won't get to the next round. They don't care how great of an iOS developer you are. Generally, they want to make sure that you have the problem solving skills and the deep CS knowledge that they're looking for before they'll take you to the next round, um, which may be more iOS specific. So that's just something to keep in mind. But now that we've considered that, what you will probably get for any other company that's smaller is a series of different formats, right? You will have a whiteboard interview potentially, a on-site interview, a take-home test maybe the night before. They'll give you maybe the weekend or you know 24 to 48 hours to complete an assignment. And then there's also the you know coding in a text editor format. So if you are caught up in the situation where you have to whiteboard something, typically it's going to be a problem that's not necessarily iOS specific. So it's going to be like, hey, how do I, you know, reverse these, reverse this list without using the dot reverse method? Or how do I sort something without using a built-in API to do it? So they're going to want to see how you write it out on the board to try to solve a problem. Now, um, it's one of those situations where you have to kind of use your own judgment, right? You, you're not there to write syntactically correct code. You are there to try to solve a problem conceptually on a board um, and work through that and uh, explain to the interviewer and make sure that they can understand your problem solving process throughout the flow. So if, if you, anytime you go into that kind of a format, that is what you wanna keep in mind. 
doesn't have to compile. Just make sure that it solves, you know, whatever the problem is that they're, they're asking you um, for that particular question. Now for the take home tests, these ones I feel are a little bit more reflective of real work. So um, this could be a take home test or an um, on site test. And typically what you'll see is you'll be given an Xcode project and it'll be probably an empty project, but you're going to be given some kind of problem to solve. It might be, you know, wire up this network API client to talk to this remote service and parse the data and do something with the response that you get back. That's so common. So always being able to just off the you know top of your head, being able to know how to make a network request, how to parse some JSON that comes back and render it in a table view. If you can do that in 60 minutes or less and you can do it comfortably, odds are if you're given that format of a take home test or an on site test, you will be okay. One of the other benefits I really like about this format, if you get it, is you have the power of Google, right? You have the internet at your disposal. If you cannot remember how to do something, you can look it up, you can research a topic, or if you forgot a particular method in one of the Apple frameworks, you can go ahead and find it. That's something that you're not gonna have the luxury of if you are given some kind of um, text editor test or whiteboarding test. So, and granted, they're different formats, but that definitely helps when you have Google at your disposal to look things up. And so let's assume you get through a couple rounds of that, right? You do one on-site interview and you pass that. Maybe you go to on-site interview number two and you pass that. So typically you're gonna be given the final meet the team interview. And, and this is important because this is where you see if you like the people that you work with. And uh, it's really more important than you think because you could get this, you know, what you think is a dream job um, only to find out that maybe, you know, you, you're, the people that you work with aren't that great or the company culture isn't what you thought it is. And that's really the worst, right? You're stuck in a place where you don't feel comfortable, you're not happy. Uh, so when you kind of get a feel of what is the office culture like, is it boring? Is it, um, you know, everyone's at their desk and there's little gray cubes or is it fun? Is it interactive? Do people talk? Are the workspaces open? So this is your time to kind of analyze all that when you're going in before you accept an offer. And so if you're comfortable with that environment and those personalities, then you can probably rest assured that it'll be okay at least in the beginning and you didn't walk into something that is just gonna be terrible for you going forward. So some tips on how to prepare. Well, for one, if you're just getting started and you are an absolute beginner, you have to start somewhere, right? So generally, um, what I think looks pretty good in an interview for new developers is have something to show that maybe an app, a personal project that you worked on that you can demonstrate live in an interview. And that's something a lot of people don't realize. You can use that as an opportunity to showcase a lot of things that you've done along the way. So let's say you've done some in-class projects. You can open up your laptop and have that ready to go and just be able to show it and then talk about it in the interview, if, especially if it's an on-site interview, right? Um, and so that's one way to really stand out from the rest of the people who maybe they don't have that. Um, or maybe you have some experience, but you have other projects on the side, but you didn't do so hot in the coding interview because you got nervous, you weren't prepared. Well, then you can use that as an opportunity to show that, hey, I do stuff that is exactly what you guys do in the real world, and I do it on the side and I do it for fun. So you can use that as an opportunity to you know, show them what you've done in your own free time. Another way to prepare um, for more of the iOS specific questions is to just Google on the internet and you'll find a list of just common iOS interview questions. Um, and anytime you're going into an iOS interview, just take a look at that and try to familiarize yourself with some of the common questions, maybe design patterns, some Objective-C questions, some questions related to how to make a network request or even something as simple as, hey, what is the difference between a frame and bounds? That, that's actually a really common question and a lot of people don't know that. So if you um, kind of get comfortable in practicing that, um, you know, right before you go into an interview, odds are you'll, you'll be okay in, in surviving uh, those questions if they're asked to you. So these are just a couple of tips of what to keep in mind when you're going in for uh, a mobile or an iOS interview. And you also have to remember that your bread and butter has to be problem solving skills, your computer science and data structures and algorithms knowledge because more often than not, that is where the majority of your questions are going to come from. And it seems weird, right? You, you wanna specialize in a domain and you, you, know, you study all this stuff, you're really good at this particular set of APIs and knowledge and design patterns, but then you go into an interview 
um, and all they're asking you is like, how do you sort this or explain to me the time complexity of this or solve this problem for things that you've never seen before. And that's just the way it is in the industry. So you have to make sure that you are comfortable with that format first. Then you start applying a lot of the tips from this video for more of the iOS specific questions that will come. And you'll get a mix of both sometimes in an interview. Um, sometimes you will get the domain specific or the iOS specific questions after you have gone through some kind of computer science round before that. So it would be terrible to have gotten through all the computer science stuff and then you fail the iOS specific stuff that uh, is a little bit easier because you can prepare for it better um, rather than, you know, just about any question they can ask you um, for, you know, a computer science uh, related kind of interview. So that's just something to keep in mind. You don't want to fail the easy stuff. So that wraps up this video. And if you liked it, go ahead and smash that like button and make sure you smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for all the latest tips and tutorials. Make sure you follow Code Pro on social media. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Patreon. And thank you so much for stopping by and I will catch you in the next one.